Welcome, this is an audio experience with Maximizing Moments with Milton. Hey Maximizers, thank you for joining me. This is Milton Herring at MiltonHerring.com. i got a two-on-one right now. We're going to be talking with my good friend Josh McLean. And uh, I'm going to read his bio. After I read his bio, he's going to give us some context about who he is, working us up to today. And then we're going to just dive into some really great topics today before we get to our Maximizing Moment questions. And just to give a little bit of uh, background about Josh, Josh says life is good today, but that wasn't always the case. Over the past decade, Josh has overcome the crippling effect of fear and a brain injury resulting from a car accident. His success proves the small actions and a strong mindset can spark powerful transformation, eliminating the feeling of being drained, conflicted, confused, and hopeless. Josh has spent 15 years in finance and strategy managing highly engaged teams and holding management positions across iconic brands including Nike, Kindergarten Education, and Ameriprise Financial. His recent book, Catalyst, Ignite Your Spark Within to Achieve Powerful Transformation, brings his signature blend of humor, passion, candor, and poignant personal experiences directly to, directly to the lives of restless achievers looking to create a more fulfilling life. I love that bio, um, and, and I can't wait to hear a little bit more about you, Josh, and if you want to kind of give us some context and catch us up to today, love to hear it. Yeah, well, I'm so glad to be on your, your podcast and talk to fellow maximizers. So my, my journey, I would say, it's a journey of both kind of redemption from rock bottom and also one of just a windy path. Definitely started out in my youth, uh, very clueless, very uh, unaware of what I wanted to be, where I wanted to go and hit rock bottom. And in that discovery of just who I was, I attempted to find that without really identifying and wrestling with those demons, if you would, that were holding me back. So what I'm passionate about, what I'm on fire about today is really helping individuals uh, not just goal set and figure out those um, plans that maybe they want to achieve in their life, but really focusing on identifying their fears that's holding them back. Because I believe that fear is a hidden epidemic that's infecting millions and it's silently robbing us of our full potential. So for me, I'm I'm a one-man show about conquering your fear. It's not about eliminating fear. I think the term fearless is a myth, but it's really about walking through your fear because fear oftentimes that I found, it's really a clue that you're on the right path. And I spent uh, almost 30 years, I would say, fear was gainfully employed in my life. And so uh, the car accident that you, you uh, read in my bio was definitely one of my huge inflection moments where I had to put down just my cardboard facade about who I thought I needed to be for other people and really just start to look inside and figure out um, what I was made for and what my greater purpose was. I think, and I'm going to just really, really hammer into maximize just like, you know, when, when Josh is talking about fear, when you're talking about fear, Josh, it, it, it really is. It's, it's, I don't think you can ever get past, like you said, fearless, I think is a myth too as well, because you'll always come across that feeling of fear um, in everyday life and different situations and moments in life. And it's the choice and decisions we make based on the preparedness we either uh, assume to have or have, or the direction we need to find out where we need to go next. And, and like you said, it's a clue a lot of times on where we need to go, especially when stuff is outside of our comfort zone or we're just not feeling it like, oh, it's not, this is different than normal. This is not what I used to do. Um, or this is this accident, like you said, your car accident really helps you break down that facade um, of who you really are. And that's that can be a very fearful moment because then you have to really sit with the fact that I'm not that person that I thought I was and who, and then answer those questions, who are you, right? Absolutely. And that's, I think a lot of people spend time complaining uh they're either complaining and that complaining is really masked fear they just haven't either diagnosed it or they're they're trying to uh, i guess yell or or 
almost yell over themselves and what they know is inside of them and what they're capable of. Or there's other people that I refer to. Uh, there's a whole group of people I refer to as restless achievers. And there's a subset in there that I, I refer to as kind of those, those dead dreamers, those folks that technically they're alive. They would go to a hospital, hook them up to an EKG and they would have a pulse. They would, their heart would be beating all that stuff, but really inside they're they're dead because they've given up on life. Mm. And I, I think I reached a point, uh, I'm almost lapping that uh, age 40 mark. So that, that kind of dates me, but I've, I spent so much time trying to achieve and that achievement was really in an isolated framework. And as I pause just to really reflect on my legacy for my kids and people that are in my circle of influence, I, I just want people to start living for more. And the biggest thing I see is people settling and people kind of giving up on life. And I just, I've just had enough. So it's, it's time to, I guess, start beating that drum and, and get people excited again. And that, and I, I believe we're, we're singing the same song, Josh, and that's why I think we're, we're connected talking today uh, to the Maximizer audience is that, you know, there's so many people that are, like you said, their heart is beating, but they're dead inside. Um, and I think the worst thing that can possibly happen in human life is someone dies without giving their all, right, and not living their purpose and passion in life and finding out who they truly are. I think the graveyard is full of people like that. And I think you and I have that same understanding that we we're we're inspired to do this to help and to help people like you look for you overcome coming overcoming fear um and and bypassing that crippling effect and myself having people see the moments that come in their life and how to maximize them versus minimize them so let me ask you this can you walk me through um josh your 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 car accident experience and Right after that, leading up, you, t- you talked a little bit about the cardboard facade, but leading up to that life, what life meant, and then shortly after that in recovery, I'm sure, um, really the, the transformation mindset that happened within you. Yeah, so I was working for a large healthcare company at the time, and I had, uh, in my mind, prescribed a path very intentional, very structured, thinking this is what I have to do, I have to reach this milestone, uh, complete this project in order to get this promotion, and really be on a track to externally have a certain title and certain amount of money coming in on a paycheck. And that that really resonated back to uh, around 2004, 2005, when I kind of stumbled out of college is what I say, and I didn't have a goal, I didn't have a purpose, and I looked around. And I identified measures of success. And those measures of success, there was three of them. And while they were good because it got me out of that current moment, they were all externally based. And so I spent 10 years really trying to check a box for other people because I thought that's what success looked like. So I was on that path. And there's a lot, in, a lot in the middle, a lot in between. I was running for my voice. I was kind of masking this fear, trying to play play big a little bit on the outside, but inside it was small as a mouse. And that that all came crashing down uh, on my car accident. It was, I believe it was a Tuesday. I was, I was driving after work. It was sunny outside and just got rear-ended. I came to a complete stop. Um, uh, few cars ahead of me had stopped and so the vehicle behind me did not see it uh, that traffic had stopped and so just got smashed and that was a journey of over three years of recovery from uh, visual kind of impairment so now it's difficult to read in certain situations Um, definitely a lot of muscle recovery and uh, concussion so those I uh, took short-term disability from work, and I spent many months just laying on the floor in pain. Mm. And while that was just brutal from a, uh, you would never want that uh, experience for anybody that you like or your loved ones, it forced me to break down and dissect who I was, and I could no longer hold up that facade of who I thought other people wanted me to be. And I just had to go back into my life and pick those pieces really the essence of who Josh was and kind of coming out of the ashes. I I think of that, you know, Phoenix rising type illustration Mm -hmm. of rising from the ashes. I had to figure out 
um, I couldn't I couldn't use brute force anymore, which was my mode of operation in the corporate world. And so I had to find those those pillars of who I really was, which include uh, a little bit of humor, kind of yeah, sarcasm, but also intensity. So those are the um, and the passion of making people, uh, helping people become a better version of themselves is what gets me out of bed every day. I, I work with numbers for a living. That's how that's what pays the bills. But that does not. Uh, it's not part of who I am at my highest potential. Right, right. And I think a lot of times we can get confused that, hey, what I'm doing on a daily basis is who I am. But really, you're talking about, again, you know, yeah, you, you might be called to your work or job or whatever your career you're doing. But I, I guarantee you there's so many people that are listening today that are finding that their roles, their careers, their job are just masking the voice like you talked about that's keeping them from being authentic and echoing their their, their true identity, echoing their true message to the to the world and to the masses and like we're doing today. Um, let's talk more about that as far as the voice and 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 I and I I've struggled with this over the years, trying to find my voice, and I, f- I feel like I do find it at times that I find myself, hey, I don't think this is quite me, but I think that's a good thing. There's, I think there's barges in life, right, that we're just we're sailing a little bit, and we kind of, ah, we're too far to the left, too far to the right, mm-hmm. and we have to correct course. Um, but tell me about that. I mean, I, that hit home, hits, hits home to me when we're talking about your voice being authentic, being you. Are you, have you found that? Are you continuing to find that? Or is it, is it a, a daily basis you feel? Or? I'm working on it. Absolutely. Okay. I am. Uh, if you ever hear me say I have reached the destination, you have full authority to shake me violently and tell gotcha. me that that's absolutely <laughs> not the case. I am very much on a journey. And for me, my voice, you know, it's funny. Uh, I started to unpack like, man, what's what's holding it back? Why? I felt like there was this hidden uh, weight or hidden weights that I just, I, I couldn't see. And so I, uh, about 24 months ago, I just kind of sat down and I was uh, working through an exercise called fear setting. And it was the first time I had really come to understand. And uh, in addition to the principles of like uh, neuroscience or just a positive psychology where some of the science is backing up some of those ideas of the mindset and the mind and the power and this idea of fear that's invisible. And I started to unpack that a little bit and I went all the way back to seventh grade. You're like, wait a minute, why are we talking about middle school? And I realized that I had one experience in middle school, I had to get up in front of the class, give a speech. I have no idea what the topic was about. It doesn't even matter because what I took from that moment was me standing in front of the class and just pause I, I just recall being frozen and I got out the words uh uh and I looked down at my feet and I was wearing a pair of black Jordans with this great red trim obviously I remember more of that than the, than the story because I was frozen and that that me looking down became an image burned in my head that speaking and using your voice equaled humiliation shame rejection separation so I took that identity, a false identity, but still nonetheless, it was uh, an identity that I had and nobody uh, at that point was really speaking into my life from a mentorship. I had tons of support, tons of love, but I didn't have somebody to help break through that mental maze of lies and deceit. So I took that identity to high school and it got bigger and I essentially got more attached to fear, rolled it into college to the point where I worked at a grocery store uh, in the area and part of the job was to have those kind of phones where you can go in the over uh, overhead system I'm sure you've you've seen them well I was a guy in the red vest and part of my job which I didn't quite understand during the interview process was to use that phone to go in the intercom and I never once to use it I would literally run 10 aisles down the store to grab somebody because I was so afraid but I learned to mask it really well. So it's kind of a comical story where you're like, okay, funny, ha ha. But it turns tragic for me when the best man at my wedding, I, I attended his wedding, and when it came to give a toast, a speech, I froze. Mm. And I, I found myself looking down at my feet, attaching 
shame, humiliation. So instead of rising up and and talking about the journey that I, that I had with this this guy for uh, over ten years, I froze and. Uh, that regret still lingers in me today. So through the journey over the the years, I've slowly started to unpack that. In the last 12, 24 months, I've gone from trying to minimize or neutralize or eliminate fear. I realized that freedom comes through fear, not by eliminating fear. So I've found myself trying to turn to that thing or that experience or that whatever it is and almost running to it as if I'm not afraid, we'll play chicken because in the last 12, 24 months, the most exciting conversations, the most exciting experiences have come when I've turned 180 and ran to fear. And that's kind of the exciting part is I'm on this journey. I have no idea where it's taking me. I'm giving my first conference speech of 2019 on the topic of fear and who knows what that's gonna lead to. So we're all on a journey and everyone has to find that one thing that is holding them back. They do. Wow, thanks for sharing that. That is um, that is the thing. And I, I, I maximize if you don't get anything today, I hope you hear Josh and his heart when he's talking about the, the effects and the opportunities when it comes to fear. Um, I, I think it's, it's amazing. I think w- we can really grasp that and really understand the information that gets input into us through the so-called fear, uh, we can we can actually develop at a higher level and succeed at a higher level because now we're understanding a little bit more about ourselves and the situation circumstances around us too. So, um, thank you, Josh. I appreciate that. Yeah. And there's, I think we could talk probably the rest of this podcast, but I do want to, uh, on, on that topic and just life in general. But I do want to get to our maximizing moment questions. If you're good with that. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, Maximizers, we got our, our questions. We're, we've asked Josh the same, and, and uh, he's going to give some insight on on what it means to maximize the moment. So we'll start with the first question, Josh. Would you give me a favorite quote and explain why and how it helps you? Yeah, the quote that I pulled was from The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson, and it, it reads, People who live with huge, vivid, clearly articulated dreams are pulled along towards those dreams with such force they become practically unstoppable Mm. and for me this quote was just powerful and it really it speaks to the magic of goal setting and the possibility of exponential returns if you get the right goals that are just really energizing to you and uh, I have combined the idea of this goal with Minimi- or, yeah, minimizing fear and walking through fear. For me, those two things combined have really been part of my acceleration of past 12, 24 months. Wow. And Max, I'll read that quote. It says, people who live with huge, vivid, clearly articulated dreams are pulled along towards those dreams with such force they become practically unstoppable. I, that's a, oh, I love that picture. Thanks, Josh, for sharing that. Absolutely. My next question for you, Josh, is provide a moment where when looking back, you let slip away and it impacted your life at some level. It yeah, will touch on it. Uh, I think I touched on it a little bit earlier, but I, I would say for me, the biggest moment that to some degree, I'm still almost trying to make up for or kind of uh, pay back a debt, if you would, is back in high school. I entered high school uh, with no self-confidence. I really didn't know where I was going. I had played basketball earlier, but then I uh, threw some knee injuries and just the skill level, I, I just wasn't able to compete. So I was naturally good at math and along with the ability to infuse dry humor and sarcasm strategically, uh, I became kind of a class clown, a little bit of a, a nuisance to the class. So my teacher pulled me aside one day and said, hey, listen, uh, I, I'm not uh, able to teach you everything that you can learn. I want you to go take classes at a local university and being in 10th grade barely able to walk down the hallway without being afraid the idea of uh going to a college campus it it literally did not compute i I just could not fathom it so instead of going towards my fear and my full potential i ran towards drug and alcohol and that really became my identity through high school and college Mm -hmm. so when I say I stumbled out of college, uh, I look back and I, I started to 
uh, kind of hit rock bottom and I realized, wow, I missed out on such a huge opportunity. And that's been part of my uh, mission the past 10 years is to almost go back and try to make up some time, if you would, or just discover how much potential is still inside Josh. And that's still a question that I'm working on answering every day. Wow. Thanks for sharing that. I appreciate that. Um, Josh, have you ever had a time where you knew there was more for you to do in life or accomplish, but were in a position or job, a career that you didn't quite line up with? Um, how did you maximize that moment? Yeah, I would say for me, um, you know, when I, I came out, uh, try to figure out where I wanted to go and my career wasn't going where I necessarily wanted to do. I realized I was kind of still clueless. A friend asked me one question that it still sticks with me today, but you know, if you could spend your day doing one thing, what would it be? And I said, work with numbers. And I realized that my current job was indirectly working with numbers, but I could go deeper into that. So for me, latching on to that idea and just seeing how far it went was a huge uh, accelerant to my growth. And from I jumped from grocery into financial services, became the youngest district manager kind of in the local area for a, uh, a mere private financial. And continue my journey to get my MBA in finance and a chartered financial analyst certification. So that uh, one question propelled me for many, many years. Mm. That's awesome because I, 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 I hear that when people latch, if you latch on to one thing, just f- grind it all the way out, follow it all the way through, you find yourself really at a level where you can you can look at other peaks, right? You're, you've, you've, you climbed one peak and you can say, oh, there's another peak over there. I like that. What peak. else is out there? Yeah, right. absolutely. <laughs> um, but if you never climb, you'll never get to see that there's opportunities elsewhere. Um, so I think that that's awesome that you're sharing that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, do you have a story, uh, Josh, of a time that when maximize the moment was important or meaningful to you? Yeah, the one that sticks out to me uh, about three years ago, I was uh, found a landing place after my car accident and was with a really good leadership team, company that had believed in engagement. I was uh, just having fun. I, I enjoyed the work. We were um, just on a good path. And I, I realized that I could be comfortable here. I could, uh, I don't want to say necessarily retire there, but I could certainly have another, you know, five, 10 years of runway and have been comfortable. But deep down inside me, I, I kind of had that idea of there's still something left to do. There's still something left to achieve. And so I ended up uh, I guess taking the risky choice and leaving that particular job to go uh, explore a new career, but also explore uh, the idea of uh, what is it that I'm looking for? What is it that is still in there that it's like scratching at my soul almost? It, it's not letting go. And for me, uh, the one question that got me out of that comfort zone was asking myself, what would I regret? And I sort of peel that onion back. What would I regret not doing if I were to die today or uh, 10 years from now or five years from now? And so that those answers, that universe of answers started to distill down until I got to the point where I realized the biggest thing I would regret not doing is publishing a book. I had been thinking about it for 10 years and I found every excuse in the book from well, I don't know enough to to write a book or it's all been written or I need, I'm not a researcher, therefore I can't write a book or, you know, imposter syndrome, insert excuse one after the other. And I realized that this is one of the biggest things for me. And that's what I ended up doing last year was publishing my first book and taking a new job. So 18, 2018 was certainly a a year of change and I'm hoping for even more in 2019. That's awesome. Even even at this stage in your career, change is inevitable. I think growth is optional, and so yeah, um, that's you're so grow, true. You're growing in this process. That that's amazing. Um, I really like this question because I get various answers. But how would you define a maximizing moment, Josh? That's a good good question. I was 
thinking about that, knowing what was coming up. Uh, and I, I think of a maximizing moment as a situation where you're, you're willing, you choose to overcome your limiting beliefs and you step through fear and you really start taking that next step towards a meaningful goal. Even when every part of your body uh, and your brain and your, just your soul says, well, you know what, staying comfortable might just be the better option. And that idea of maximizing speaks to the quote that we talked about before. Just you, you, you attach that goal and you just start, instead of taking one step after the other, you're almost taking 20 steps after the other because you're just, you're, you're leaping like a kangaroo. Wow, that's, that's a good one. I love that one. Taking every step, every part of you, even though it wants to be comfortable, it says, nope, I need to push through this. We're not that's, doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. Um, the next thing is our maximizers are all about these uh, impact. They're all, we're all about immediate action steps. And I know you have some, Josh. Can you give me three immediate action steps to take for a person to maximize a defining moment um, in their life? What would that be? Yeah, for me, I when I look around, and I don't know if it's true for you or not, but at least the individuals that I'm encountering and talking to, they're, they're driven, they're motivated, they're... Um, they're dedicated. They definitely want to make a difference, but they're just overwhelmed. They feel drained. They're pulled in a million different directions. So this first step, the first actionable item to start defining and taking action towards your maximizing moment would be to schedule a block of what I call white space thinking time. And this is not 10 minutes in between a meeting or necessarily on your drive home. This is Put it on the calendar. This is go to either get up early when the family's not up or go to a local coffee shop and turn your phone to airplane mode, grab, get old school, <laughs> grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, and just give yourself some space because we're so overwhelmed with information that we we don't realize that we're maxed out or we're tapped out on information. And so we're like, it's like the computer that's just running hot that you haven't rebooted it. So white space thinking time is the first step. Number two, would be do the uh, 80 20 assessment you know the 80 20 principle you kind of do the define the the 20 percent of activity that's driving 80 percent of your your happiness or reverse the the 20 percent of items or activities that are driving 80 percent of your pain and really start to understand what is triggering you for both happiness you know what brings joy but also what causes stress and just to start getting a list and once you have that list, you can go to step three and start getting very tactical on answering the start, stop, do. What should you start doing more? Or start doing, sorry. What should you stop doing? And then what should, what should you do more of? So for me, I do okay drinking water, but I should certainly start doing more of water intake. Um, exercise is a good one. Maybe you exercise one day a week, but you should do it more. Or write your kids, watch your wife a note not just on Valentine's Day or birthdays, but once a week, slip notes in their lunch boxes, whatever it may be. But those, that getting to that very tactical level where you don't have a laundry list of 100 things, you get five things and you start getting really good at those, they become habits. Mm. And then you go back to the list and you start grabbing some more and eventually you look back and you say, I, I don't know how it happened, but just by taking that very next step, I was able to create momentum that well exceeded anything I thought possible. Wow, I love that. Schedule a block of white space thinking time. That's It just almost makes me want to take a deep breath, right? I think that's where we're at and, and cutting away from yeah. that work and technology and then performing that assessment. I remember sitting down with a, a life coach once and telling him how much more I wanted to do in life and he challenged me. He says, Write down everything that you do right now, and I guarantee you have enough on your plate to do what you want to do. <laughs> so, yeah. And I was like, oh, man, he was so right after I did that exercise that uh, I was already wrapped up in so many things that I can give more time and attention to and assess to. So I, like you said, start doing or stop doing or do more of. And so um, 
and that was that was in a, a powerful moment. That, and that's cool. And I think you know, telling someone locks you in emotionally uh, yeah. with accountability. That's great. I appreciate that, Joshua. Thank you so much. Um, I've enjoyed our conversation today, and and I always want to leave our maximizers, you know, with with some parting words or comments and instructions that are my my guests might have and they want to share. And I'll leave this time for a couple minutes um, that you can kind of share and give your your parting thoughts. I'd say, you know, we've covered a lot of ground today. Uh, so my biggest piece of advice is to really find one thing to put into action. I don't care what it is for you. Everyone that's listening is at a different spot in life, whether it's around fear or white space thinking time. But just find one thing and do it well. And that's going to give you some new perspective and, and you'll, you'll start to understand that change is possible and start to believe more in yourself and even start to encourage others around you. So that's my biggest piece of advice is just find one thing that you need to take action on. Awesome. That's it. Well said, Josh. Maximizers, I really hope you, if you listen to this again, take some notes. There's so much good nuggets in today's conversation with Josh, and I, and I appreciate his time and giving us today, and I hope you give him some love on social media. Um, so where can they find you? You know, if, if my audience, Maximizers, wanted to find you, what are you promoting right now? Anything that we can, we can tap into? Yeah, you can find me a few different places. One is uh, at my website, catalystignite.com. I have a mini course if you're interested in identifying and removing roadblocks. Uh, I can definitely hook you up there. Uh, also on Facebook at, um, you can just type in Josh Catalyst and I'll, I'll pop right up. Otherwise, uh, you can also grab my book on Amazon. If you type in Catalyst Ignite as well, it'll be the either the top or the second list. But those are really my uh, my big places that if you want to hang out and, and interact and say hi, definitely uh, stop on by. Wonderful. So, Max, we've got CatalystIgnite.com, Facebook, Josh Ignite, uh, Catalyst, um, and then on Amazon. Grab his book, guys, Ignite Your Spark Within, Achieve Powerful Transformation. Um, looking forward looking forward to reading that as well. Thank you so much for your time, Josh, and, and uh, giving Maximizers some good, good words of wisdom and nuggets to hang on to. And Maximizers, my prayer and hope is always that every time we do these episodes that you will continue to live your best life and I will be able to continue to max help you maximize any given moment in your life towards success. God bless you everybody. Thanks Josh. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank all you. Right. Bye bye all. Hey guys, thank you for joining on this fire episode of Maximizing Moments with Milton. Please join my MiltonHerring.com. Sign up for my email digest. You get it weekly in your inbox. Fire in your inbox. Thank you for sharing, listening, and commenting. And again, God bless you guys.